gentlemen to Catoctin High School, home of the Cougars for some exciting Frederick County girls basketball. Now, my name is Michael Betteridge. I'll be doing your play-by-play, -play. joined here at courtside with color analyst Tyler Wilhelm and our videographer Ty, uh, Hollis Zimmerman. Thank you so much for tuning in. We've got an exciting game lined up for you. Now, now that we're past the halfway mark of this uh, basketball season, the schedule throughout Frederick County begins to focus on conference and divisional opponents as we head towards the CMC championship at Hood College, Tyler. And that means that these two teams are neck and neck in the Gamble Conference of the CMC. Yeah, they're fighting their way to get to the uh, county championship. Katoctin look, looking to return there and looking to, uh, to avenge what happened last year as they fell to Urbana. And tonight, tonight's game features two teams vying for third and fourth. Catoctin at four and two and Middletown at three and three. These two teams played a really close thriller back in mid-December with Catoctin eking out a close three-point win. Yeah, now that, that record is just for the CMC. Right. That's a divisional conference record. Uh, overall, Catoctin comes in. They're nine and three. And the uh, Middletown Knights, Lady Knights, are six and seven. So that's our setup as the players are about to be introduced on the floor. Uh, you know, that there's an important reason to pay attention to this game. Uh, both the teams are remarkable starting freshman centers. Katak yes, that's right, Mark. Mike, Catoctin center Brooke Williams is only a freshman and is second in the league in rebounding, averaging 10.8 a game. Her opponent, Alexis Parker, who's also a freshman in Middletown center, is equally as talented. Yeah, that's going to be a good matchup to keep an eye at. And we understand there might be a late scratch here. Uh, we have been told that Riley Nelson, she's the quarterback. She's in the game. She is. Looks like she's going to get it out. All right, so she's gutted it out with an ankle injury. And uh, we'll see how much, see if they limit her minutes on the floor. Well, right now she's starting. There you go. Well, you never know, do you? Never do know. All right, so uh, that's the setup for you. Now, one thing I did want to mention is uh, these these records that we're talking about don't mean a whole lot. We'll talk about that when we get back after this break. We'll be right back with a message from our sponsors. Central 
Life Chiropractic in Pilates, located on Water Street in Thurmont, serving the community since 1993. Center of Life is dedicated to treating the whole you, and not just your symptoms, back pain, neck pain, injury, or you just want to improve your mobility and feel healthier. Dr. John Hageman's innovative approach to whole body health is completely unlike anything you have experienced. With convenient hours from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and afternoon hours only on Tuesday from 3 to 7.30 p.m., Center of Life is there for you. Center of Life is closed on weekends and Thursdays. Center of Life accepts all major credit cards and uses the honor system so you pay what you can afford. What an amazing difference they will make in you today. Center of Life, make an adjustment to your life today. Center of Life is a proud sponsor of local high school sports. Backhoe Service LLC is conveniently located at 108 North Carroll Street in Thurmont. With over 40 years of experience in the plumbing industry, celebrating its 10th year serving our community, specializing in all phases of plumbing, including septic installation and repair. The favorite part of our job is meeting new people and knowing that we helped. Kelco Plumbing prides itself on a job well done. With pricing that won't flood your budget, burst pipes, water damage, clogged drains, replacement, remodel, or upgrades. Kelco Plumbing Services, most major fixtures, faucets, water heaters, sump pumps, and well pumps and pressure tanks. Kelco Plumbing is certified and licensed in Maryland and Pennsylvania. Call them today at 301-788-9791. That's 301-788-9791. Emergencies or planned repairs, Kelco Plumbing will go out of their way to explain exactly what needs to be done in simple, easy-to-understand solutions. When a plumber's work is done well everyone is happy remember a good flush beats a full house every time kelco plumbing is a proud sponsor of high school sports on the radio that's right kelco plumbing center of life chiropractic and thermont country kitchen sponsoring tonight's game between the middletown knights and the Catoctin Lady Cougars, Lady Knights and Lady Cougars playing here. These teams are both in the lead in the Gamble Division. And I mentioned about the, the um, I made kind of a funny statement when I said the, the records don't really matter because everybody gets in the playoffs. Right. So essentially what they're, everybody is playing for at this time of year are seedings brackets right right and Catoctin obviously wants that number one seed that they had last year that's important you get home court advantage all right here we are center circle both those t Parker gets the tip off but it goes into the hands of the Cougars straight to the hoop into the paint she gets caught kicks it out out front dribbling back Catoctin, around front Catoctin has to have a much better shooting percentage tonight if they want to win this game a shot and a foul. Taylor Smith going to the line. Nice foul. Taylor takes it straight to the hoop. She goes hard all the time. A lot of hustle in that young lady. That's right. And she's a returner from last year. I believe it was her sister that was a senior last year on this team. Swish. So Taylor makes the first point of the game. She'll shoot one. She misses the second one. Rebound to Grange. The Grange out to Riley Nelson. She drives into the paint, backs out, looking for help. And Riley Nelson, this will be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how that foot's holding up. Over to Jenkins. Jenkins, the lead scorer of this team, kicks down underneath. Out. Jenkins, she drives. She pulls up and shoots on the run. It's an air ball. Rebound, number 12, brings it up. Samantha Horndorf. And we've got a whistle and a trapping violation on Samantha. You can't always go in for the foul because sometimes you're going to travel and sometimes you're just going to lose the ball. That, this is why it's important for Catoctin to shoot it well tonight. You can't always rely on points with, you know, by fouls. Into Breonna Lawyer as she brings it across midcourt, fires it down on the left. And the good D of that uh, Katoshin Lady Cougars knocks it out of bounds. That's right. That was uh, Kylie Colby that knocked it away. Here we go. Inbound. Into Nelson in the corner, right in front of the scorer's table. 
She drifts right. Out on the right wing, she fires it to Jenkins. Jenkins goes off the pick. Jenkins right over to the other side. Lob inside. inside. Kick back out. Jensen does a step back, and it's good. That was it rattles a, and drops for the first tree at tray of the game. That was a very interesting jump. Stolen underneath. There's a scramble for it. Catoctin comes up with it. And it looks like Coach Whistle got the timeout. So Catoctin will keep possession of it with a 30-second timeout. There was a scramble on the floor, and we were seconds away from a jump ball. And Catoctin, they... You know, they look a little sloppy. I mean, they're not, I mean, they're losing the ball. They're, they're, um, they're dribbling in the double teams. I mean, a triple team, that's, you know, what caused the travel. I mean, they, they got to shoot the ball. They got to shoot the ball. They can't rely on just driving through the paint and trying to get fouled. They got to shoot the ball. Right. I mean, one of the big things they were really good at last year that helped propel them to a state championship appearance yeah. was their shooting. This is a different team, Tyler. This is not a shooting team, this is a hustle team. They try to score off hustle. Here we go, out front to Smith. She hands off to Orndorff. Orndorff resets the offense. She goes left, into the corner. Back out, reverses off the pick. Straight to the hoop she goes, and she's caught underneath another traveling violation on Orndorff as bodies hit the deck all over. Man, talked and just another sloppy start. They had a sloppy start last week against Brunswick, too. Here we go. Now on the right to Jenkins. Je no, Jenkins. Walkersville, excuse me. That was Walkersville, not Brunswick. Jenkins off the pick. Left side. Looking. In the corner to Nelson. Middletown doing a great job of working the ball around. Team Bria, shot by DeGrange, no. Other side, shot, rims in and out. Rebound. Rebound, Orndorff. She brings it down. Looking long, she wants to go. She gets tripped up in the paint. We and we've got a kick, and that'll go to the Cougars. I mean, again, the Cougars just look sloppy right now. I mean, they're, you know, they're slipping and falling. They're losing the ball. They're... It, into the game comes Glottfeldy to sub out Orndorf as Glottfeldy goes into Taylor Smith. Underneath on the cutter, taken away. That's another unforced turnover. Karen Nelson, she brings it up. She hands off to Lawyer. Lawyer off the pick, bounce pass underneath. We've got a whistle. Traveling violation. That goes on Colby for the Knights. That might be the one mistake the Knights have made on offense so far. They've passed the ball very well tonight, very efficient so far. So the Knights showing a two-zone trap press. It looks like we got a foul. And we do. Taylor Smith takes it right around the defender. And the defender didn't have position on the sideline, so she forces her out of bounds and draws the foul. In the backcourt. I think that foul was on the big freshman, Talia Jenkins. Taylor drives off the pick, goes all the way, loses the ball. She gets hacked on the arm, but no call. Yeah, she wanted the call. The ref was looking right at it. Cougars ball. Looking for the cutter inside. They don't get it. Then they get it inside. They have to work it back out front. Here comes Williams. She goes with the fingertip roll. It doesn't go. Knocked out of bounds, Cougars will get it back. I mean, right now the shots just aren't falling. They don't ever for this team. These, these Cougars shoot 22% from the field. They make their buckets on fast break turnovers from the steal. There's a shot from the corner, in and out. Loose ball tipped away. Cougars will get it back. I mean, obviously, I mean, they, they rely on very good defense. They're nine and three. I mean, I mean, if you're nine and three and you don't have a great shooting percentage, that means you play really, really well on defense. Well, and the coach knows that, and she's got it set up that way. She knows how to get the most out of this team for what talent she's got on the floor. Taylor Smith pulls up, kicks it over to Glottfeldy. Back to Smith. She shoots on the run. It doesn't go, even get close. Rebound, Middletown. So Catoctin has shot five baskets and none of them have gone. Yeah, all they, all they have is the one free throw by Taylor Smith. 
in the opening play of the game. Yep. Riley Nelson threw it out of bounds. So that's a turnover by Middletown. I'd say right now Riley Nelson's ankle is holding up. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good to me too. There's no brace or wrap. Doesn't look like it around her ankle. Yes. Brooke Williams draws a double team. She kicks it out to Taylor. Taylor drives a paint. She goes up hard and draws the foul again. And so that's what the Cougars did successfully against Walkersville was they penetrated and drew the foul and tried to get Walkersville in foul trouble early. And that seems to be their strategy here. Yeah, and I think they're trying to attack Talia Jenkins. So Taylor misses the first free throw. I mean, they want the big freshman getting in the foul trouble so they don't have to deal with that height under the paint. She misses them both. So the Cougars are one for four from the free throw line and 0 for six from the field. Cougar foul on number 25, Brooke Williams. Oh, they called the a foul there. Teams first. Foul on Brooke Williams. Interesting. Turn and shot way over. Loose ball knocked out of bounds. White ball. Cougars will get it. I mean, again, the Cougars are playing very well on defense, but they got to start scoring some baskets. Orndorff up front, top of the key, down on the left side to Glotfeldy. They work around the perimeter, back to Orndorff. She looks for the cutter. Smith sets up the pick, and there's a shot. Short off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound Middletown. And they haven't been getting many rebounds either. So that was a 15-footer that wasn't even close. And then a transition bucket back the other way for DeGrange on a beautiful feed. Here come the Cougars doing the same thing, and they missed the layup. Missed the layup. Whoa. Ripped away and stolen. Outlet to Nelson. Nelson, Nelson wide open, lays it in. So two back-to-back -back fast breaks for the Knights. Whoa, and the Knights jump out to us. And the Knights jump out to a 7-1 lead at the 3-10 mark of the first quarter. We'll be right back after this break. At Thurmont Country Kitchen, one recent diner summed it up perfectly. This place is so good, the words are hard to find. It's a wonderful small-town diner with awesome food and great service. Thurmont Country Kitchen is located on Water Street in downtown Thurmont. Open weekdays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturdays, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sundays, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Remember when Grandma used to say, if you're looking for a great restaurant, follow the locals. And that's exactly what you'll find at Thurmont Country Kitchen. A wonderful mixture of out-of-town guests, travelers, and... All right, we're back live as Taylor Smith takes the inbound. Zone trap for the Knights. Lob cross court to Orndorff. She pushes it right, bounce pass right into the hands of Jenkins for Middletown. So another turnover, and here come the Knights. Up by six. Nice fake by Riley Nelson there. Underneath, turn, shot off the glass, no good. Loose ball. Glotfeldy comes down with the rebound. Glotfeldy pushing it down the right side. She backs out between the leg, steps back and shoots. That it's was in. much needed. Rattles and drops for the first tray of the game for the Cougars. That is exactly what they Glotfeldy needed. Glotfeldy for three. Underneath, kicked away, knocked out. Kicked out on the corner, shot in and out. Loose ball tipped away. Middletown get gets it back. Rebound. Riley Nelson penetrates and throws it away. Ooh. It was blocked. It was a blocked shot. Okay. All right. Cougars got a hand on it, so it's Knight's ball. 2.09 to go. 7 to 4, Middletown. Into Colby. She lobs it inside to the green. She spins, turns, shoots, and misses. Once again, nice defense there by Taylor Smith. Getting some help there. Orndorff brings it up. 
Wide open in the corner is Gladfelly. She wants the ball. She shoots from the corner. It's and good. There go. She's got another one. Two for back to back trays for Gladfelly. And they tie it up at seven apiece. Down on the left side, dribble drive, no good. Rebound, Cougars. Here comes Brooke Williams. She gets caught in the trap, kicks it over to Orndorff. Orndorff clears it out. Lob down to Glotfelli in the corner. She brings it back out front. Glotfelli with the hot hand right now. Backcourt violation, Glotfelli dribbled it on the line. Great defense there by Riley Nelson. It was a very pressing good defense. That's a great observation. Riley wasn't giving up an inch on that one. As Jenkins comes out of the game. And I think Caden just needs to be more aware of where she is. And Stampers into the game for Jenkins. Yes. Right in front of us, Brianna Lawyer Ooh. turns the ball over. Little frustration right there. Into Smith. Taylor brings it up. Guarded by Nelson. Down on the left side to Glotfeldy. She dribbles in the paint. Bounce pass underneath to Williams. Williams turns, fires it out from the wing. Short. Good hustle there by Smith. Oh, oh, yeah, keep that in. Smith. We got a whistle. Not sure what the call is. Shot eight. clock. They shouldn't. They didn't. They should not have reset the shot clock. Right, because it didn't was, hit the rim. That was an error ball. Yes. Yeah. I think the uh, scoring table thought it ticked the rim. It, it, it looked like it had a little glance on the rim. Hard to tell, but the referee's right there, so he gets the call. Right. So let's see. They still got the clock at 30. Glotfeldy will inbound. Glotfeldy from the corner. She pulls the trigger. It's oh! good. So wish nothing but net. Glotfeldy's got three trays in a row for nine points. And the end and of she this steals first period, a steal by Glotfeldy. Man, Glotfeldy is on a roll right now. 10-7, to 7, the Cougars have taken the first lead of the game. Lobbed inside, around the wheel they go, into Williams. She gets challenged. Whoa. She gets hacked across the arm hard, she hits the deck. So Brooke draws the foul underneath. It's going to be on the floor. Cougars will inbound. Nice foul on number four, Riley Nelson. I'll tell you Her one first. thing, Middletown's going to have to adjust to Glofelty. Back into the game comes Smith. Lob outside to Williams. She drives, goes in hard, spins, turns, fires to Glofelty. She pulls the trigger again. This oh. one rims in and out. Loose ball, outlet to Coolby. She can't get to it. She saves it right into the arms oh, of a Cougar. And Taylor Smith brings it across midcourt. Eight seconds on the clock. There's a battle between a lot of contact. She gets hacked on the arm right in front of the referee. No call. Now we've got a whistle. Oh, they're going to call a technical. They're going to they're well, call uh, a And rightfully so. Antwistle is livid because she got hacked right across the arms in front of the referee, and he said nothing. Oh, they're not going to call a technical. All right, they're going to give the ball to the Knights. 1.8 seconds on the clock, so. It must have been out of bounds. That'll probably do it. Yeah, it must have been out of bounds, and then they came over to talk to her. There's the inbound. Into the corner, shot at the buzzer. It's the air ball, no good. And that's it. At the end of eight minutes of action here at Catoctin High School, the Catoctin Lady Cougars 10, and the Middletown Lady Knights 7 will be right back. That was
Department High School Sports Broadcasting. Since 2008, we have broadcast more high school sporting events than any radio station in the four-state area. Football, basketball, baseball, and softball. Regular season playoffs and state championships from Southern PA to Brunswick, the western mountains of Maryland, to the eastern shore. Cool Oldies 1450 THU is number one in high school sports broadcasting. back with you live for the start of the second period here of action as Taylor Smith goes straight to the basket. She shoots and scores. So Taylor Smith takes it off the glass to start it out here in the second period with another two. And the Cougars have a five point lead now, 12 to seven. Taylor Smith doing what she does best, driving the paint. Fire down in the corner. Hard to the basket goes Lawyer, she shoots. Save it right into the hands. Oh, and it rolls in and out. And so the thing that played the Cougars on another, and there's a finally a shot goes, and Stamper gets the bucket. That's, but a that great, was, that's a great example of never giving up on the play. Five straight misses on the Middletown Knights until they finally got a bucket to trim the lead to three. Taylor goes hard again. This time she gets caught too far behind the backboard and hits the edge of it, and a lawyer brings it up. Lawyer goes to the hoop, sees the opening, has her shot blocked and knocked away. Cougars ball. Great defense there by the Cougars as they make another substitution. Orndorff's coming back into the game. All right, here we go. Orndorff drives off the pick down the right side, backs out. Fires it over to Glotfeldy. She kicks it over. They lob inside to Williams. She backs in, turns, spins, and shoots, and misses. She gets it, pulls it away, and steals it. Back over to Orndorff. There's a scramble for it and a jump ball. I think it's going it's to go to Possession the arrow goes to the Knights. The Knights. How tall is Talia Jenkins? I don't have height on here, but she's a big girl. She is. Down in the corner, Parker pulls the trigger. It's inside. Ball's tipped away. The Cougars come up with it. Here comes Orndorff on the run. She gets it knocked away, out of bounds. At the scorer's table, Cougars ball. That was nice team defense there by the Cougars. Into Orndorff, in the backcourt. Orndorff brings it across. She drives straight through and gets hacked, knocked to the ground by two different players on a penetrating drive in the paint. She split the defense. That was a slick move. It was, and now she's going to the line, hopeful, hoping to uh, make these two shots. And that's 14 fouls now on the Knights, one on Catoctin. Misses it. Now into the game we have Grace Williams. She subs out. In and out, rebound. Kylie Perhatch, another miss underneath by Williams. Brooks 0 for 3 tonight. Traveling violation. And Katakton's also 1 for 6 from the free throw. Our lawyer, Orndorff to inbound. Into Glotfeldy. She brings it across. Drifts right. Bounce pass down on the wing to Smith. Smith drives off the pick. She goes right to the basket. Kicks it out to Williams who loses the handle. She taps it to William, to uh, Glotfeldy. She drives in. She, she gets caught and has the ball stolen away by Lawyer. Here comes Lawyer. She gets her shot blocked. Here comes Grace Williams on a breakaway. Grace pulls up. She shoots and makes it. Nice little so jump gets there. a five footer. Let's the defense fade past her. There's an outlet to Lawyer in the corner. She knocks it underneath and it's stolen. Here comes Brooke Williams on the breakaway. Brooke goes right hander, misses the layup. Oh, good, but Taylor Smith comes flying through the lane and knocks it free. And the Cougars have a reset. Great hustle there by Taylor Smith. She came out of nowhere. 
Orndorff, she gets tripped up in the paint. Coming the other way, misses the rebound, loose ball, scramble for it. A lot of contact underneath, shot from underneath. In and out, rebound, loose ball, tipped away. Taylor Smith with a hustle, she's looking large. Going left, going right. Back over to Orndorff, and the Cougars relax and reset with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Over to Glotfeldy, she lobs inside to Williams. Williams backs in, turns, and we've got a blocking foul on the center, Alexis Parker, for Middletown. So that matchup, the one we wanted to keep an eye on, is interesting. Smith comes out for a breather, and she deserves it. I was about to say, yeah, she's given 100% on every single play. Into Williams on the inbound. She shoots in and out. No good. 0 for 4 now. Williams hoping to get at least one in now. I think Williams got kind of lucky she didn't get called for a foul there. Dribble drive. Doesn't go. Loose ball stolen by Williams. Williams on the outlet to Glotfeldy. Glotfeldy. She goes baseline. Pulls up. Gets caught. And we've got a whistle. Travel on Glotfeldy. Got another substitution. Glotfeldy coming out into the game. Colby. Or Colby. Peyton Davis. Nope. Sorry. Rebecca Zentz in the game now. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong roster. <laughs> yeah. Lob inside. High post to Grange. She pivots. Hands off to Nelson. Nelson drives the paint. They collapse the zone. The shot. No good. Good positioning. Rebound. Whoa. And a blocking foul. On another Alexis one, back to back Parker. on Parker. Nice foul on number zero, Alexis Parker, her second, team's sixth. That's her second foul. I think that other foul was actually on Talia Jenkins. Yes, I believe you're Parker. right. They both have two. So Middletown with only one to give. Cougars leading 14-9, to nine, and they have the ball. And the Cougars are playing great defense. They're not giving the Knights much room in the paint. They're making them shoot from the perimeter, and the Cougars are getting basically all the rebounds on defense. And just as you say that, Middletown steals the ball, and Nelson brings it up. Nelson, skip pass, cross court. Bounce pass inside to DeGrange. Nice play by, that's a beautiful Whoa, play by that. Kylie Perhatch as she reached in and tipped it away. And I believe they're going to change that call. Yeah, that's, yes. that's the right call. They reversed the change the call. That, that was a good call. That was a good call. Middletown ball. Yep, that was a good call. Good communication by the officials. In to Colby. Over to Stamper now. Grange drives. Nelson drives. She pulls up. She shoots the fader. Rims in and out, rebound Catoctin. Whoa. Baseball pass down court, wide open. Shot off the glass and a score. Number 21, yes. Peyton Davis with the bucket. Let's go, Peggy. Man, Catoctin just playing great team defense. They're not letting anything. Knocked away, Nelson shoots. It rims in and out, kisses the backboard and drops in. Nelson with the bucket. Nelson. Now we've got a whistle and a foul. It's going to be a one-on-one. On Nelson. One. That's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. We'll walk the floor. Nice foul, number four. Wiley I got to say, Katoctin. That's Nelson's seven, second two, personal. I got to say, Katoctin is not making it easy down Zero in the seven, paint for the Knights. Katoctin is playing great defense under the rim. Two minutes and 44 seconds to go in the half. Swish. Nothing but net. Taylor Smith with her second free throw make of the night. Against the Knights. Huh. Got them both. Ooh. A rainbow. Nothing but strings. Yeah. 18 to 11. Nelson brings it across midcourt. Down on the left side. She's looking for the screen from DeGrange. She gets it. That's the ideal perfect shot. And the Cougars are just swarming right to the ball right now. Stolen. Here comes Brick Williams on the breakaway. She lobs it over to Smith. Smith pulls up. 
wide open at the key. Shot goes in and out for Perhatch. Right hander off the glass, no good. Williams comes up with it. From the corner, wide open. Swish! Nothing but net and a tray for number 11 for the Cougars, Rebecca Zentz. The Cougars are just playing some great team basketball right now. They certainly are. 21 to 11 at the 155 mark of the half. Great team basketball. They're getting everybody involved. Everybody's playing good defense. They're making it Nelson. very hard to get it down below in the paint. Bounce pass underneath and a score shot by Clara Stamper. And they get the bucket. Here comes Taylor Smith. She backs out. I think they need to slow it down here a little bit. Over to Perhatch. Perhatch looking underneath. She lobs inside. And they kick it back out. Shot from the corner. It's short. Loose ball, Middletown to Green steps on the line on the rebound. Should have let that Cougars go. Ball. DeGrain should have let that go. Yes, she should have, but in the heat of battle, you do what you think is right. Yep, I understand that. Here we go, cutter underneath, a shot. A loose ball on the floor, knocked out of bounds, the Knights will get it. Lawyer brings it up, across the mid court, down on the left, she spins, turns, backs out, hands off to DeGrange, they lob inside, stolen! Brooke Williams with those long arms reaches up and intercepts the lob inside. Smith with the ball on the wing, bounce pass on inside, turn and a hook shot, no good, rebound DeGrange. Here comes Lawyer. Over on the right side, DeGrange with it. Lawyer saves the loose ball. Stamper, she drives off the pick. She shoots. Oh. Whoa, that was... Uh, that was a very, very, very late So call. Stamper shot the three, and it didn't go, and she was fouled by Catoctin. So she will shoot three from the line as the two referees huddle up and well, talk about it. Well, they weren't the one who made the, but I don't made think, the call. I don't think they liked the call. They're yeah. discussing it right now. Yeah, but it's, it's the guy over by the table who made the call. Correct. Swish. So Stamper gets the first one. She'll shoot two. Nothing but net. A chance to get three the hard way right here. Cougars with wholesale substitutions now. Stamper to shoot one. And she did it, three points the hard way. Field goal, free throw, free throw, free throw. Taylor Smith brings it up. 28 seconds on the clock, 24 on the shot clock. Smith goes hard off the pick. She drives, hook off the glass. It's too far behind. Middletown ball with 19 seconds. So Taylor caught behind the backboard again. Here comes Lawyer hard. Well, we got whoa. We got a call, a whistle on Taylor Smith. Well, you know, that's okay. The Cougars aren't in foul trouble. That's only their third foul of the half. That's only Taylor's first foul of the game. Exactly. And with a hustling player like that, that's good news. That's very good news. She's been all over the court tonight. Lawyer to DeGrange. She shoots off way off. Smith with the rebound. Seven seconds on the clock. Taylor goes to the basket. She drags it the off, off the fingertip roll. And that's the final shot of the first half as the Cougars will take a 23 to 16 lead to the dressing room here at Catoctin High School. We'll be right back for your first half wrap up in just a few minutes.
Anytime Fitness is the perfect way to stay in shape. From either home or work, Anytime Fitness of Thermont is always close by, and they're open 24-7. They can tailor a personalized training program to fit your workout needs. Anytime Fitness can also fashion a membership and payment plan that will be flexible enough for your on-the-go lifestyle. You'll love the 24-hour co-ed fitness center with state-of-the-art equipment designed to sculpt and tune you into shape. And when you're away from the Thermont area, your membership guarantees you access to any of the over 1,000 clubs worldwide. Visit us at 130 Frederick Road to start your program today. Now you can stay healthy anytime with Anytime Fitness. Airlines have just reduced their prices even more. Book 30 days in advance and save big. Want the absolute lowest prices on your airline tickets? Then call the low-cost airlines travel hotline right now. For prices so low, we can publish them anywhere. The only way to access our low rates and save up to 70% is to call. Save hundreds on your vacation tickets by calling right now. You can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your for airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 802-341-4526. 802-341-4526. That's 802-341-4526. What's the People's Restaurant? It's the diner. And you won't find a better one than the Mountain View Diner. It's the ultimate comfort food. From delicious appetizers to sandwiches to succulent entrees, the Mountain View Diner can satisfy any taste. If it's mouthwater and Greek fare you're after, the Mountain View Diner will not disappoint. And don't forget the famous cheesecake. Mountain View Diner on West Patrick Street in Frederick and in Charlestown, West Virginia, across from the casino. A winner three years in a row for a Best of Frederick Award. The people who love great food eat at the People's Restaurant. The Mountain View Diner. This can be a busy time of year. Running around getting ready for company, visiting friends, or spending time enjoying family. We are all too familiar with a growing list of errands that need our attention. Gary the Barber knows how busy life can get, and so he makes sure that your convenience and a great haircut are first on his list. Call Gary the Barber today. Gary the Barber has hours to accommodate any busy schedule. 301-305-7895. Hey, everyone. Gary the Barber is open for business. Just call 301-305-7895 to make an appointment right away. That's 301-305-7895. Get a great haircut today. Where do you get your real-time information? News, weather, traffic, school delays and cancellations. At Cool 1450 AM, one of our most important resources is frederickscanner.com. Live traffic cams, weather cams, city and county resources, police, fire and rescue. Anyone living, working or traveling in and around Frederick should bookmark frederickscanner.com on their PC or go to their Facebook page and download the mobile app today. frederickscanner.com. A live information window to Frederick County. High Low Auto Sales with locations in Frederick and Mount Airy and our... Our new location in Cockeysville, Maryland, we specialize in high-quality vehicles at low prices. All types of credit, financing, or leasing. You drive away with peace of mind in a vehicle with a Hilo sales six-month, 6,000-mile warranty. Find out about the Hilo difference at one of the leading independent automobile dealers in Maryland. That's Hilo Auto Sales. We look forward to serving you at HiloAutoSales.com. Welcome back. We're at halftime, 23 to 16. The Cougars on top, and uh, the first—I'd say the first half of that first period was pretty much all Middletown. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was just pretty sloppy for the Cougars. You know, they really—you know—they were a bunch of unforced turnovers. They couldn't really drive the paint. They kept losing the ball. They kept traveling. But one thing that was pretty consistent for them the whole half was defensive rebounds. Two. Absolutely, yes. They did a great job with rebounds. We have a winner. Come on down. I mean, especially, I mean, the MVP of the first half, I mean, it's obviously Taylor Smith, right? I mean, Taylor Smith mm -hmm. went hard on every single play, every single second. You know, even when she was at the perimeter and someone's, you know, taking a, 
drive to the paint trying to make a layup. She's always hustling under the hoop to get the rebound. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, Glotfeldy, I think, was the difference in that second period. When she had those three back-to-back -back trays, that was a nine-point difference. It gave Katoxin the first lead of the game. So uh, That's right. It was 7-1 Middletown at that point. Then she made three straight threes to take the lead. And, and uh, that's the difference in the game in this first half so far. Glotfeldy and Taylor Smith, the hustle and the shooting. And... Uh, one thing we'd like to see is Brooke Williams get it on track because uh, she has got zero points in the yes. first half of this game. And she's usually one of their scoring leaders. Right, I, so, believe, I believe she's 0 for 4 or 0 for 5 right now. Just Well, she's down low with Jenkins. She's bracketed with Jenkins and Parker, two bigs. So I think that has a lot to do with it. All right, this is our last break before we start the third period here. We'll be back in just a few. have stopped attending church since 2020. This is Matt Staver with Freedom's Call. Government officials imposed COVID-19 restrictions against houses of worship about three years ago. As a result, these restrictions have apparently precipitated an overall decline in religious worship attendance. In fact, a recent study reveals that approximately one in three Americans have stopped attending in-person church services since the lockdowns in 2020. The data showed that only 13% of Americans reported attending in-person worship services in the summer of 2020. This increased to 27% by the spring of 2022, but the rates of worship attendance were still lower than they were before the pandemic and subsequent lockdowns. The lockdowns had a negative impact in our communities and many churches closed at the time of the greatest need. Churches are the source of hope and help to hurting people. Stay informed at Liberty Council's website, lc.org. On the go, on the radio, on your mobile device. Listen to cool classic oldies and great high school sports at WTHUradio.com. All right, we are back with you here live for the start of the third period, and there's the inbound as Catoctin's Orndorff, Samantha Orndorff, brings it across. Lob inside to Taylor Smith. She kicks it out to Brooke Williams. She shoots! Williams has got her first points of the game, and it's a tray from the corner. 
And there we go. I mean, we talked about it at halftime. That was the only thing that was missing. Lawyer over to Grange. To Grange looking. Nelson fires it inside, turns and shoots off the front of the rim. Rebound Taylor Smith. Taylor Smith comes hard. She always does. She sees the opening, goes straight to the hoop, misses the layup. Rebound. Cougars have it. Top of the key. Shot. Too hard off the back iron. Rebounds get the second offensive rebound. Man, the Cougars are just hustling. They're hustling. They're getting their rebounds. And the Knights, I think, are getting tired. There's the cutter, back out. Taylor Smith shoots the three. In and out, loose ball, tipped away. Middletown will get it. One thing I've noticed here, one adjustment that Coach Entwistle has made is she's got Taylor Smith posting up underneath now and Brooke Williams playing point. Well, that'll make it easier for Brooke to shoot threes. And I think it's gonna make it easier because Taylor Smith has got the muscle to deal with those two bigs. And that's a shot by DeGrange and a score. And I was about to say, even though, even though Brooks taller, Taylor is a little bit bigger. So Orna, well, she's stronger too, much stronger. Right. Granted, Brooke is only a freshman. Smith backs it out, rifles it across the court. Nice pass. Into the hands of Grace Williams. Grace shoots, off the glass, no good. Rebound, put back, block, no good. We got a shot clock violation. So Middletown inside defense effective in that series. Jenkins brings it up. 26 to 18, Cougars have the lead. Nelson, top of the key. Down in the corner to Lawyer. Lawyer looking for the cutter, it's not there. Then they lob inside and it's stolen away. The Cougars collapsed on DeGrange and took it right away as Brooke Williams pulls up, holds up, shoots, and the putback is no good, and a loose ball underneath, and DeGrange has it. I thought Brooke Williams may have gotten fouled on that initial Not may have, she definitely was fouled, and the Middletown scores on the transition. That definitely looked like an arm slap. It wasn't even hard to see. Inside on the cutter, stolen away by Middletown, and then trapped off the leg of Williams. That was a smart play by Riley Nelson. Riley Nelson knew she had no play. She knew she was in trouble. She had to do something, and that was what she had to do. Timeout on the floor. I want to thank our sponsors for making this game possible. Center of Life Chiropractic, Dr. John and his crew will take great care of you. Uh, right there on Water Street. Uh, check out their hours on their website, centeroflife.us. Also, Kelco Plumbing, located on Carroll Street for all your plumbing and backhoe needs. Kelco Plumbing, a proud sponsor of Lady Cougars basketball. And finally, Thermont Country Kitchen, that roasted chicken is off the hook. Go down there today and check it out. Have some of that chicken. Enjoys a great service, great prices and a place that all the locals in Thurmont love, Thurmont Country Kitchen. Thank you for sponsoring tonight's game between the Middletown Knights and the Catoctin Cougars. Here we go. And a shout out to Rob and Sherry. Hi, Rob. Hi, Sherry. Inbound, Jenkins brings it up. Down on the right side. Colby with the ball. Nelson. DeGrange shoots the long one. In and out, loose ball, rebound. Cougars have it. Taylor Smith brings it up. Taylor looking for the hole. Nice she pass. kicks it out. Glofilly shoots the three. It's short. Loose ball. Rebound. Catoctin. Well, we got jump, a jump ball. ball. I'm thinking it's going to go Middletown. Yup. Catoctin inbounded to start the half, so it'll go Middletown. So possession arrow to Middletown on the jump ball. And the Knights have managed to trim the lead to six. Well, it was six. No, it was seven to start the second half. Here we go, Nelson brings it up. Down on the left side, DeGrange on the wing. Bounce pass inside, shot, score. So Jenkins with a nice soft touch off the glass with the left hander. And Smith is back out front running the offense. Down on the left side to Glotfeldy. She's looking, 
She gets Williams on the cutter, high post. Williams takes a look, backs out and shoots. In and out, loose ball, rebound, Grace Williams. The putback, no good. Gets her own rebound and then loses out of bounds. Middletown ball. I don't think Grace Williams ever really had control of that. Into Jenkins. Four point game now. Knights continue to whittle away at that Catoctin lead. I think if the Knights score another basket down here, Coach Entwistle has to take a timeout. From the corner, behind the back, Jenkins goes baseline. Pull up shot, no good. Rebound Catoctin. Outlet to Smith. Smith goes hard to the basket. She goes through the lane and around. Glottfeldy in the corner. Smith brings it out for her and resets the offense with 16 seconds on the shot clock. Down to Glottfeldy on the left side. Grace Williams in the cutter through the lane. Into Williams high post off the screen. Williams loses it off her own feet. And it's Middletown ball. It has been a bit of a struggle tonight for Brooke Williams. Not her best night. No. Oh. I mean, on the back end, defensively, I think she's played very well. She's gotten rebounds. She's played Full very court good pressure defense. now by the Cougars. But offensively, the shots just aren't going right now. Right. Nelson lobs it inside, oh, stolen. Here comes Perhatch. Perhatch goes up off the glass and misses. Loose ball on the floor. Over to Nelson. Nelson brings it up. She rifles it to a wide open Jenkins. Oh! Brooke Williams blocks the shot clean. Comes back with a behind the back and brings it across midcourt. From outside, no good on the three pointer. The putback is no good. It dropped. It, it dropped. It bounced twice on the rim and fell in. Well, that's exactly what the Cougars needed. And a great block on the back end by Brooke Williams. Jenkins was wide open and Williams recovered. Rifle underneath, Colby drives baseline, pulls out as it's stolen by Williams. Here comes Williams, she pushes it down the floor. Rifles it straight out on the run. A and shot by Orndor, or Glottfeldy, and she misses, but she's fouled. And we get a whistle. Great sequence nice for Brooke foul. Williams Number defensively one, right now. Her third, team's first. So Jenkins has three now, and Glottfeldy will shoot two. Got it. Bit Nothing of an but off, net. Bit of an off night for Brooke Williams offensively, but defensively she has been on. That is correct. That's a great observation. Glottfeldy to shoot one. I mean, again, in basketball, everybody has to be a two-way player. You have to be. Caden gets them both. Substitution. Caden comes out. In comes Orndorff. The sub are out. Caden gets a rest. Into Lawyer for the Knights. Lawyer brings it up. Down on the right side. Lawyer kicks it out. Parker, high post. Baseline drive, pull up shot. Whistle and a foul underneath. Got a blocking foul. Cougars foul. Although I must say this. Her first. The Cougars, through nearly, through nearly three quarters of the game, have done a very good job of, saying, of staying out of foul trouble. Got it. That's only their fourth foul of the game. So Stamper makes the front end. 30-23, Cougars. Stamper to shoot one. Got them both. She's a good free throw shooter. I think, I think she's five for five now. She's the one that made those three in a row earlier on the three, on that's, the, the that, hard way. That's right. Smith drives, pulls back as it's stolen away. Great play by number 23, Clara Stamper. Here comes Lawyer to the basket. She gets her pocket picked and she's fouled. So that's going to go against number 11, Rebecca Zenz. How is it she's at the free throw line? It was a shooting foul. Okay. Got it. Back in the game comes Glottfeldy. And I didn't catch the other player's number. I think it's Grace Williams. I think you're right. She got them both. 
I don't think Middletown's missed the free throws. I don't tonight. think so either. I think that that would be, by my guess, that would be three, four, seven yeah, for seven. Yep, seven for seven. Smith on the wing, off the pick. Spins and turns, hands off the Glotfelder. She drives paint. They're going weave now. Brooke Williams loses it, gets it back. Williams off the pick. She kicks it out. In the corner, Glotfelder loses it. Bounce pass underneath, stolen by Nelson. Here comes Nelson. Outlet to Lawyer. Lawyer goes to the basket and scores. And Lawyer's got the hot hand right now. She scored their last six points. Middletown trimmed the lead to two at the 119 mark of the third. Cougars over to Orndorff. Underneath is Williams. She has it knocked away. She saves it to Orndorff. Cougars playing tentatively now. Not attacking. There goes Taylor Smith. She goes up and has it stripped away. The ball's on the floor. There's a scramble, whistle, jump ball. That's going to stay with Katak. It is. But I don't know if the shot clock's going to reset. It is not. There's only three seconds on the clock. So the Cougars have to work in imba their best inbound play right here and expect Grace, uh, Brooke Williams to get the ball. Whoa, they got one. And Williams with the rebound. She spins, turns, and misses the second one. And we've got a whistle and a foul over the back on the Cougars. So the Cougars miss two shots in a row from layup range. And that is the reason that the Cougars have allowed this lead to be whittled away as now they go cold again from the field. I mean, they're having the same offensive woes that they had at the start of the game. Yes, they are. Into Nelson. Nelson brings it up. 48 seconds in the period with a chance to tie. Nelson down on the left side. Parker sets a pick. Give pick and roll to Parker. She scores. Got a tie game just like that. This is Parker. Beautiful pick and roll. Off the screen, blocking foul. That's going to go against Stamper. She doesn't like it, but... Nice foul, number 10, Kate Stamper, her first, team second. Krugers will inbound. Into Taylor Smith. Smith, down the left side. She goes crossover. She goes spin. She lobs it underneath. Wide open shot to score. That was needed. Grace Williams puts it in. Wide open from the corner. She fakes, dribbles, and shoots. Bank shot in and out. Loose ball. Cougars have it on the run. Two seconds. She's got a shoot on the run. And there it is at the buzzer. Grace Williams does not get the bucket. But they have the two-point slim lead margin at the end of the third period. Catoctin 32, Middletown 30. We'll be right back after this. Life Chiropractic and Pilates located on Water Street in Thurmont, serving the community since 1993. Center of Life is dedicated to treating the whole you and not just your symptoms, back pain, neck pain, injury, or you just want to improve your mobility and feel healthier. Dr. John Hageman's innovative approach to whole body health is completely unlike anything you have experienced. With convenient hours from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays and afternoon hours only on Tuesday from 3 to 7 30 p.m. Center of Life is there for you. Center of Life is closed on weekends and Thursdays. Center of Life accepts all major credit cards and uses the honor system so you pay what you can afford. What an amazing difference they will make in you today. Center of Life, make an adjustment to your life today. Center of Life is a proud sponsor of local high school sports. All right, we are back. There should be eight minutes on the clock, and there, there it goes. We have eight minutes on the clock, and there's the inbound. Middletown controlling the ball in this fourth period of action here. An exciting, very close girls basketball came. Skip pass cross court. 
to Jenkins. And I think Lawyer this, underneath. I think this is the kind of game we expected. The Green shoots the five footer, rims in and out. Rebound Glotfeldy. She brings it up. She drives and pulls up. Jump ball as they tie her up on the drive. That should stay with Kataka. It does. So the Cougars get a break because Glotfeldy just got tied up trying to drive that paint. Taylor on the cutter and she gets, misses the basket. But she will shoot two. She'll shoot two as nice Taylor's down. upset with herself because she did a beautiful cutter on the inbound yeah, to the back side. Everybody two. wants the M1, but not always going to get it. Well, you got to make the free throw too, and she doesn't. There it is. There's right. that touch. That's a big one. Yep, she got one. Into Jenkins. Jenkins comes hard. Guarded by Smith. Oh, beautiful defense by Glotfeldy. And she wanted the call, but she didn't get it. But that's okay. She disrupted that pass into the corner nicely. Middletown from their own bench. They will inbound. Into Nelson. Nelson rifles it over. Colby. Nice catch. Pull up, Lawyer has it stolen. Glotfeldy with the breakaway. She goes up, shoots, and scores! Nothing but net. So Caden Glotfeldy coast to coast on that one with the steal in the bucket. And Nelson tries to do the same thing, but that defense collapses, and they pull the trigger from the other side, but it doesn't go. Williams has it. Back to Taylor, they reset. Taylor drifts left, calls for the pick. She gets it, goes straight to the bucket, and she's tripped, bounce pass to Glotfeldy. She drives, kicks it out to Smith. Smith with the head fake, skip pass cross court, shot, and That's Williams foul. is fouled, she'll shoot two. Good ball movement on that possession. Great right ball Cougars. movement, great ball movement indeed. Finding all the passing lanes, getting fouled, now you're at the line. 35-30, Cougars by five. Misses it. 6.37 to go in the game. Two subs come in. Lexis Parker's back in. Catherine Stamper in. Williams to shoot one. Misses them both. Rebound. Jenkins. Jenkins brings it up. Down on the right side. Colby has it. She dribbles back. Over to Jenkins now. Jenkins lobs inside. Loose ball. Shots off. Cougars with the rebound. Brooke Williams. Over to Grace Williams to Glotfeldy. Skip pass. Williams backs in, turns and shoots off the glass and scores! Yeah. Much and needed. that's the shot she's been trying to make all day. Yep, much needed point. She's been very good on the back end. Not as good on offense, but those are points that she'll take any day of the week. Cougars have gone on a nine point run here. Got a jump ball, that jump will ball. Middletown. Middletown will get it underneath on the offensive rebound. Tied up. Still great defense by Brooke Williams, nonetheless. She has been awesome on the back end. Into Colby. Jenkins has it. Jenkins drives, spins, shoots on the run. Blocked. Has it blocked. Blocked by Brooke Williams again. Loose ball picked up by Smith. Smith guarded by Nelson. Goes left hand down the left side. Cross over to the right. She goes hard to the right and brings it across midcourt. She goes straight to the hoop, kicks it cross court to Glotfeldy. She shoots from three point land. Whoa! Oh. Nothing but net! Four in a row, four threes tonight for Caden Glotfeldy and a 10 point lead for the Cougars. What a pass! 
What a pass. That looks like Patrick Mahomes throwing it across his body. And Glottbelli draws the foul on the defensive play right at the top of the key. And so that's the fourth team foul, both teams with four. And again, this, this could be big later on. Middletown's proven that they're good at shooting free throws. Jenkins with the inbound on the floor. They lose it. Cougars come up with the ball. I think Nelson slipped and fell. Smith coming over that right side again. They set the pick. She goes to the bucket, kicks it out. Glottfeldy. She looks for the pass, looking for help. She gets it from Smith. Seven seconds on the clock. Taylor pulls up. Grace Williams shoots. It's in and out. Rebound. Brooke wins. There puts it go. back in for the score. Much better second half for Brooke Williams. Stamper on the left side. That's seven points for Brooke. 42-30. Cougars extend the lead to 12 now with four minutes to go. Oh, beautiful drive by Nelson as she splits the D in for the easy layup. And yeah, before that layup, I was about to say the Cougars are on a 12-0 run. And there you go. It's 10 points now. Taylor Smith underneath, wide open. Grace Williams, she scores. What a game for Taylor Smith. Taylor Smith with the feed. It was a beaut. Stamper, she brings it over. Over to Parker out front. Nelson, she shoots out front, way off balance. Bank shot doesn't go, Williams gets the rebound, and then Williams is fouled. I think that was Oh, no, no, they called timeout, timeout. Time no foul on the whistle. So Coach Entwistle saw that Williams was in trouble, so she called timeout to get the maintained possession. 44 to 32, Cougars back to a 12 point lead now. And boy, oh boy, at one point, this game was tied up. Oh yeah game was tied up. The Cougars looked like they were in trouble. It looked like the Knights had all the momentum and the Cougars took it right back at the start of this quarter. I want to remind you we'll be traveling next Thursday over to Ligonor High School where these same Lady Cougars will face the number one in the Frederick County girls basketball team, the Linganore Lancers. Yep. And that should be a barn burner. Yep, the Linganore Lancers, you know, tonight they're playing North Hagerstown and they're coming off a rather surprising, shocking upset loss to Westminster yep. on Tuesday yep. by a score of 47 to 46. And, and they said it was a wake-up call. Was that a, was how they characterized it. It was a wake-up call, but it seems like the game was going relatively well until the fourth quarter because it said they were up by 12. So you're doing your first high school sports scoreboard tomorrow at 11.30, Saturday morning, and you're going to talk about that game a lot, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, I'm going right. to talk about that early on. Here we go. Cougars to inbound. Full court pressure. Man pressure. And Glottfeldy gets in trouble with Nelson. She brings it across court. And there's a force and a foul on Nelson. Cougars ball. That's Nelson's, Nelson's foul. third foul. Nelson for third, team's fifth. Cougars with a four corner inbound. Into the backcourt, Taylor Smith trips and loses the ball and then she gets it back. She regains her footing and she brings it up. It seems like whenever Entwistle subs out Taylor Smith, she's out for less than a minute. Into Williams, Williams backs in. She kicks it out. Loose ball. Docton keeps it. Yep, that was knocked out. Yeah, it seems like, yeah, Taylor Smith hasn't gotten much rest. She's, she's out. Then, like, 30 seconds later, she's back in. She's a beast. She doesn't need it. Bounce pass into Williams. To Greens, Gardner, hard. Williams loses the ball. And Nelson's got it. Obviously, Middletown going to be playing with a little bit of desperation right here. Drive to the basket, shot, no good. Williams with the rebound. She rips it away from Stamper, and then Stamper takes it back, and DeGrange misses the layup, but draws the foul. That was a good foul to take by Brooke Williams. Cougars foul at number 25, Brooke Williams. That's Brooke's third, third personal. Team's fifth. Catherine DeGrange. That's her third, two. but this late in the game, that's okay. Yeah. 
She got it. So DeGrange gets one, 44-33, 2.41 to go in the game. Cougars on top. They have not missed the free throw yet today. Got them both. Orndorf brings it up. Orndorf across the court. She drives off the Smith pick. Orndorf spin, kicks it over in the corner. Shot from the wing, it's good! Brooke Williams with another tray. Brooke Williams with a bit of a monster fourth quarter to say the least. Yeah, she really came alive. Yes, she did. In this fourth period. She's got seven points. From the corner, shot. Air ball, too far. Taylor Smith comes up with it. She's fouled. Fouled from behind. In the backcourt. What a That's great, nice great foul. fourth quarter for the Cougars. They're outscoring the Knights 15 to four. Sixth team foul. The Knights only have one to give now. And their court. Man pressure by the Knights. And they're most likely gonna give it soon. And Another they, foul. And they just did it. There it is. Nice so foul. that'll send Orndorff to the free throw line to shoot the one and one. Team seven. That's the fourth foul on Riley Nelson. Sam Orndorff. So Nelson in foul trouble. I'm sorry, to shoot the one and one. And, it looks and she like comes out. Yeah, but I'd say unless Middletown makes this game a little closer that she's probably done for the day. Got it. That's a big one. It is. So Orndorff makes the first one. She'll shoot the bonus. And she doesn't get the roll that time. Loose ball. Cougars come up with it. Whoa. And then there's a foul. And Orndorff gets fouled again. She's going to take another trip. Timeout. Uh, no, 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 it was timeout. Coach Ant Whistle got the timeout yes. off. Yes, so Orndorff had the ball and went to some called timeout. That was not a foul. What a great individual effort, though, by Grace Williams to keep the ball in bounds. She was one on three in that situation. Indeed. <laughs> great crowd here on a Friday night. Absolutely. The Dr. and Crazies are right behind us having a blast. Yes, they are. They always do. Miss Flabby founded this group when I was I was in high school. I can't remember if I was a freshman or a sophomore, but the was it, Wasn't that a great celebration for her last week? Oh, yes. Yes, for sure. And the old principal was here, Mr. Casada. Mr. Casada right. is actually now the principal at Middletown. He is. Rifle underneath. Beautiful pass and a score. Bucket by Williams. Smith to Williams. On a laser. Great second half for great second half for Brooke Williams. That's 12 points for her. That's really good. She got shut out in the first half. This half she's been much better. She's been really good all game on defense. And she's been really great on offense in the second half. And that's huge. That's huge. She scored 12 points. That's a bit of a difference maker. Look at the score. It's 50 to 34. So Stamper makes the first of two. Yeah, and the Cougars averaging 47 points a game have already eclipsed that by three now here tonight. And they've held the defense to 35, which is five points below their typical game average of 40. So Stamper gets the second one in the Glottfelder. She gets trapped in the corner, but gives it to Taylor, who brings it out. And Taylor tries to freeze the ball a bit and work the clock. Looking for help. A lot of contact, no whistle. They run a weave, Glottfeldy. She runs it back. She's looking for help. Hands off to Smith. Smith has it stripped from behind. Outlet, nowhere. They lose the ball back to the Cougars. Yeah, Middletown's going all out. 58 seconds on the clock. And the Got Cougars it. are freezing the ball. Now we've got a whistle and a foul on Nelson. That's her fifth, she's gone. Yeah, I believe that's it for her. Nice foul, number four, Wiley Nelson, her fifth. Team's eight. 
and will walk the floor yes, where Taylor Smith will shoot the one and one. She looks exhausted. Yes, she does, but she's definitely the player of the game for sure. I don't know how well the Cougars do if she's not out there. I got to say, this was a much needed win for the Cougars. Much needed, convincing win. That'll give them a lot of confidence heading into the end of the season and heading into the postseason. Taylor throws up a rainbow and it goes in. So she'll shoot the bonus. I mean, if the Cougars are looking to make another run to a state championship, you know, this is the time to start. This is the time to start. This is the time to get a little bit of momentum. And this is a time where you can start playing with some more confidence. And she makes them both. Underneath, stolen. Cougars have the ball. By who else? Taylor Smith. Yep. They play catch. Glottfeldy. She gets fouled. So Perkins gives the foul up, and that'll, that'll send us into double bonus now. It doesn't matter what your record is. If you get hot at the right time, sometimes it's all it takes. Look at Oakdale last year. Yeah. Oakdale got hot at the right time, and they made that run to the state championship, and they won it. They did. So she misses the front end. And here comes Colby with the ball from the corner. Shot is short. Rebound Smith to Brooke Williams. Williams to Glottfeldy. Back to Smith. Smith brings it up. Stops at the line and backs out. Over to Brooke Williams. Williams brings it across and she's fouled by Lawyer. What a great fourth quarter for this Cougars team. They out they have outscored the Knights 20 to 6 in this quarter. 20 to 6. Wow. After Middletown rallied to tie the game late in the third, the Cougars have outscored them 22 to 6 since Brooke Middletown Williams. tied the game. Brooke Williams shoots the one and one, makes the first one. So she will have an opportunity to go for the bonus now with 19 seconds on the clock in the game. Tremendous second half for Brooke Williams. And she misses the second one. Rebound Madison Phillips. Tremendous second half for her. That's 13 points in this half. And she, you know, she became a bit of a difference maker. Colby shoots no good. Rebound Cougars. And they can just hold the ball and let the clock run out. And that's exactly what they do. They freeze the ball and that's it. The Catoctin Cougars have defeated the Middletown Knights in an amazing come from behind victory in the third period, 53 to 36 here at Catoctin High School in front of the home crowd and a well-deserved victory for these Lady Cougars. We'll step aside for our last break of the game and be back for our post-game wrap up after this. One recent diner summed it up perfectly. This place is so good, the words are hard to find. It's a wonderful small town diner with awesome food and great service. Thermont Country Kitchen is located on Water Street in downtown Thermont. Open weekdays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturdays, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sundays, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Remember when Grandma used to say, if you're looking for a great restaurant, follow the locals. And that's exactly what you'll find at Thermont Country Kitchen. A wonderful mixture of out-of-town guests, travelers up and down Route 15, and the locals who love Country Kitchen's award-winning roasted chicken. Homemade cooking at its finest with lots of sweets and goodies at the counter to go. Country Kitchen is a great place for birthday parties, meetings, or just to take the family when you're out and about. Their huge menu has something for everybody, and their warm country home atmosphere and small-town charm will take you back to simpler times. Thermont Country Kitchen, satisfying and delicious. You'll feel right at home at Thermont Country Kitchen. Thermont Country Kitchen is a proud sponsor of local high school athletics on the radio. Indeed, they are our proud sponsors. That's Center of Life Chiropractic, Kelco Plumbing, and Thermont Country Kitchen. Well, 
A big congratulations to the Catoctin Lady Cougars who go to 10 and three on the year. Uh, uh, that is a big win for them after a two game slide. Two game slide where they just did not shoot the ball very well at all. And they did it against a, a team, a Middletown team that's good, was good enough to come back, take the lead and hold it for a while. But Catoctin didn't give up and I'm impressed. No, they did not. And and Kitak I mean, this was also a Middletown team coming off of a big upset win against Oakdale a couple of nights ago. Great point, great point. So they had they had the momentum essentially, and and uh, the Cougars needed that win here tonight, though. I mean, this, this was really important for them. I mean, not only was this a great win, this was a convincing win. They won by 16 points, and this is a team they only beat by three earlier in the year. Yeah. So your key to the game, Tyler, Taylor Smith. Hustle, strength. Taylor Smith, hustle and strength. And yeah. Brooke Williams on the defensive end yeah. all game. She got hot in the second half on offense. Struggled a little bit in the first half, but Coach Ant Whistle made adjustments. You know, got her to the top of the perimeter. And, you know, got her shooting the ball. And, you know, her shots ended up falling. Yes. And uh, we notice this team tends to go cold a little bit, but that's I think that's when the game gets away from them a little bit. And all they have to do is settle down and work their offense and get back in it. And I think that was the key was Coach Entwistle coached a brilliant game here tonight. She used her timeout strategically. She had the right players on the floor when she needed them. And she had these girls coached and ready to go. Yes, she did. And I'm going to say right now, I think the key, key to this game was conditioning. Yes, definitely. The Catoctin Cougars are a well-conditioned team. They were, they were able to keep their starters and yet work their bench in and their rotation was perfect here tonight. Yeah, I was about to say, whenever Taylor Smith came off, it was for much less than a minute. Yeah, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's our wrap-up. Uh, we we got a special guest here with us. What's your name? Joe Smith. Joe Smith. Which, that's no joke. That's no joke. That's right. Joe, what would you think of the game? Oh, it was something. It didn't look like it was going to turn out like this, yeah. but they did finally get number 10. They sure needed it. Grace Williams had a great game, didn't she? I don't know how many points she had. Not sure, but she came off the bench and really helped the team. Yeah, it's a good thing they made her three-pointers. Yeah. That sure did help. That was huge. Caden uh, uh, Glottbelly had four, four three-pointers in the game. That girl's got a real funny name. Yeah, that's a funny name, all right. All right, thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. First thing to last is uh, uh, hard enough, anyway. <laughs> All right, Joe, you have a great weekend. All right, and you all have a great weekend, too. On behalf of the entire Cool Oldies 1450 team, I want to thank you for tuning in to this big win for the Catoctin Lady Cougars. My name is Michael Betteridge with Tyler Wilhelm joining me in commentary. Tyler did a great job. And our buddy Hollis Zimmerman up there, up top, running the video camera. Have a beautiful weekend. We'll see you next Thursday at Linganore. Don't worry, if you can't make it to the game or miss the broadcast, all of our high school sports games are archived and available online at WTHUradio.com in our audio vault.